Amputation is the removal of a limb by trauma, medical illness, or surgery. As a surgical measure, it is used to control pain or a disease process in the affected limb, such as malignancy or gangrene. In some cases, it is carried out on individuals as a preventive surgery for such problems. A special case is that of congenital amputation, a congenital disorder, where fetal limbs have been cut off by constrictive bands. In some countries, such as Afghanistan, Brunei, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, amputation is currently used to punish people who commit crimes. Amputation has also been used as a tactic in war and acts of terrorism, it may also occur as a war injury. In some cultures and religions, minor amputations or mutilations are considered a ritual accomplishment. When done by a person, the person executing the amputation is an amputator. In the U.S., the majority of new amputations occur due to complications of the vascular system, especially from diabetes. Between 1988 and 1996, there were an average of 133,735 hospital discharges for amputation per year in the U.S. In 2005, just in the U.S., there were 1.6 million amputees. In 2013, the U.S. had 2. 1 million amputees. Approximately 185,000 amputations occur in the United States each year. In 2009, hospital costs associated with amputation totaled more than $8.3 billion. There will be an estimated 3. 6 million people in the U.S. living with limb loss by 2050. Lower limb amputations can be divided into two broad categories, minor and major amputations. Minor amputations generally refer to the amputation of digits. Major amputations are commonly below knee or above knee amputations. Common partial foot amputations include the Chopart, Les Franck, and Ray amputations. Common forms of ankle disarticulations include Pyrogoff, Boyd, and Syme amputations. A less common major amputation is the Van Ness rotation, or rotationplasty, I. E. The turning around and reattachment of the foot to allow the ankle joint to take over the function of the knee. Types of amputations include an above knee amputation. The 18th century guide to amputations types of upper extremity amputations include a variant of the transradial amputation is the Krukenberg procedure in which the radius and ulna are used to create a stump capable of a pincer action. Partial amputation of index finger. Hemicorporectomy or amputation at the waist and decapitation or amputation at the neck, are the most radical amputations. Genital modification and mutilation may involve amputating tissue, although not necessarily as a result of injury or disease. Nails are typically trimmed with nail clippers, but this is not typically considered amputation. In some rare cases when a person has become trapped in a deserted place, with no means of communication or hope of rescue, the victim has amputated his or her own limb. The most notable case of this is Aaron Ralston, a hiker who amputated his own right forearm after it was pinned by a boulder in a hiking accident, and he was unable to free himself for over five days. Body integrity identity disorder is a psychological condition in which an individual feels compelled to remove one or more of their body parts, usually a limb. In some cases, that individual may take drastic measures to remove the offending appendages, either by causing irreparable damage to the limb so that medical intervention cannot save the limb, or by causing the limb to be severed. Transfemoral amputation due to liposarcoma Three fingers from a soldier's right hand were traumatically amputated during World War I. Frostbite, also known as frostnip, happens when the individual's skin is exposed to cold weather for too long. The fluid in the pale skin solidifies, creating ice crystals, leading to swelling and severe pain. Other symptoms can include numbness, confusion, dizziness, fatigue, nausea, stiffness in the muscles or joints as well as difficulty walking. If the frostbite doesn't get treated soon, this process results in hypothermia, death or poisoning of the bloodstream. This can affect the hands, feet, toes, fingers, eyes, and face. Once the frostbite shuts the eyelids, this is known as snow blindness. The only way to stop it from spreading is through skin grafts or amputation. Sometimes professional athletes may choose to have a non-essential digit amputated to relieve chronic pain and impaired performance. Curved knives such as this one were used, in the past, for some kinds of amputations. The first step is ligating the supplying artery and vein, to prevent hemorrhage. The muscles are transected, and finally, the bone is sawed through with an oscillating saw. Sharp and rough edges of bones are filed, skin and muscle flaps are then transposed over the stump, 
occasionally with the insertion of elements to attach a prosthesis. Distal stabilization of muscles is recommended. This allows effective muscle contraction which reduces atrophy, allows functional use of the stump and maintains soft tissue coverage of the remnant bone. The preferred stabilization technique is myotasis where the muscle is attached to the bone or its periosteum. In joint disarticulation amputations tenodesis may be used where the muscle tendon is attached to the bone. Muscles should be attached under similar tension to normal physiological conditions. An experimental technique known as the Ewing amputation aims to improve post-amputation proprioception. In 1920, Dr. Janos Ertl, Sr. of Hungary, developed the Ertl procedure in order to return a high number of amputees to the workforce. The Ertl technique, an osteomyoplastic procedure for transtibial amputation, can be used to create a highly functional residual limb. Creation of a tibiofibular bone bridge provides a stable, broad tibiofibular articulation that may be capable of some distal weight bearing. Several different modified techniques and fibular bridge fixation methods have been used, however, no current evidence exists regarding comparison of the different techniques. A 2019 Cochrane systematic review aimed to determine whether rigid dressings were more effective than soft dressings in helping wounds heal following transtibial amputations. Due to the limited and very low certainty evidence available, the authors concluded that it was uncertain what the benefits and harms were for each dressing type. They recommended that clinicians consider the pros and cons of each dressing type on a case-by-case -case basis e. g. Rigid dressings may potentially benefit patients who have a high risk of falls and soft dressings may potentially benefit patients who have poor skin integrity. A 2017 review found that the use of rigid removable dressings in transtibial amputations, rather than soft bandaging, improved healing time, reduced edema, prevented knee flexion contractures and reduced complications, including further amputation, from external trauma such as falls onto the stump. Postoperative management, in addition to wound healing, should consider maintenance of limb strength, joint range, edema management, preservation of the intact limb and stump desensitization. Traumatic amputation is the partial or total avulsion of a part of a body during a serious accident, like traffic, labor, or combat. Traumatic amputation of a human limb, either partial or total, creates the immediate danger of death from blood loss. Orthopedic surgeons often assess the severity of different injuries using the mangled extremity severity score. Given different clinical and situational factors, they can predict the likelihood of amputation. This is especially useful for emergency physicians to quickly evaluate patients and decide on consultations. Private Louis Francis was wounded July 21, 1861, at the first battle of bull run by a bayonet to the knee. Traumatic amputation is uncommon in humans. Loss of limb usually happens immediately during the accident, but sometimes a few days later after medical complications. Statistically, the most common causes of traumatic amputations are, the development of the science of microsurgery over the last 40 years has provided several treatment options for a traumatic amputation. Depending on the patient's specific trauma and clinical situation, Methods in preventing amputation, limb sparing techniques, depend on the problems that might cause amputations to be necessary. Chronic infections, often caused by diabetes or decubitus ulcers in bedridden patients, are common causes of infections that lead to gangrene, which would then necessitate amputation. There are two key challenges. First, many patients have impaired circulation in their extremities, and second, they have difficulty curing infections in limbs with poor blood circulation. Crush injuries where there is extensive tissue damage and poor circulation also benefit from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The high level of oxygenation and revascularization speed up recovery times and prevent infections. A study found that the patented method called Circulator Boot achieved significant results in prevention of amputation in patients with diabetes and arteriosclerosis. Another study found it also effective for healing limb ulcers caused by peripheral vascular disease. The boot checks the heart rhythm and compresses the limb between heartbeats. The compression helps cure the wounds in the walls of veins and arteries, and helps to push the blood back to the heart. For victims of trauma, advances in microsurgery in the 1970s have made replantations of severed body parts possible. The establishment of laws, rules, and guidelines, and employment of modern equipment help protect people from traumatic amputations. The individual may experience psychological trauma and emotional discomfort. The stump will remain an area of reduced mechanical stability. Limb loss can present significant or even drastic practical limitations. 
a large proportion of amputees experience the phenomenon of phantom limbs, they feel body parts that are no longer there. These limbs can itch, ache, burn, feel tense, dry or wet, locked in or trapped or they can feel as if they are moving. Some scientists believe it has to do with a kind of neural map that the brain has of the body, which sends information to the rest of the brain about limbs regardless of their existence. Phantom sensations and phantom pain may also occur after the removal of body parts other than the limbs, e. g. after amputation of the breast, extraction of a tooth or removal of an eye. A similar phenomenon is unexplained sensation in a body part unrelated to the amputated limb. It has been hypothesized that the portion of the brain responsible for processing stimulation from amputated limbs, being deprived of input, expands into the surrounding brain, phantoms. In the brain, V.S. Ramachandran and Sandra Blakesley, such that an individual who has had an arm amputated will experience unexplained pressure or movement on his face or head. In many cases, the phantom limb aids in adaptation to a prosthesis, as it permits the person to experience proprioception of the prosthetic limb. To support improved resistance or usability, comfort or healing, some type of stump socks may be worn instead of or as part of wearing a prosthesis. Another side effect can be heterotopic ossification, especially when a bone injury is combined with a head injury. The brain signals the bone to grow instead of scar tissue to form, and nodules and other growth can interfere with prosthetics and sometimes require further operations. This type of injury has been especially common among soldiers wounded by improvised explosive devices in the Iraq War. Due to technological advances in prosthetics, many amputees live active lives with little restriction. Organizations such as the Challenged Athletes Foundation have been developed to give amputees the opportunity to be involved in athletics and adaptive sports such as amputee soccer. Nearly half of the individuals who have an amputation due to vascular disease will die within five years, usually secondary to the extensive comorbidities rather than due to direct consequences of amputation. This is higher than the five-year mortality rates for breast cancer, colon cancer, and prostate cancer. Of persons with diabetes who have a lower extremity amputation, up to 55% will require amputation of the second leg within two to three years. The word amputation is derived from the Latin amputare, to cut away, from ambi and put air. The English word pus was first applied to surgery in the 17th century, possibly first in Peter Lowe's A Discourse of the Whole Art of Chirurgery, published in either 1597 or 1612. His work was derived from 16th century French texts and early English writers also used the words extirpation, disarticulation, and dismemberment, from the old French desmember and a more common term before the 17th century for limb loss or removal, or simply cutting, but by the end of the 17th century amputation had come to dominate as the accepted medical term. Thanks for watching.